Hello stationary nerds. So today I'll be reviewing 10 erasers and I'll be assessing each eraser on a bunch of different metrics. At the end I'll weigh the scores for all these metrics to give each eraser a rating out of 5, which will be mapped onto a tier list. So let's get right into it. So I went to my local store and I bought 34 erasers, of which there were 10 different types. Now you might think that's overkill, but I personally like carrying extra rubbers in my wallet so as to avoid any unwanted mistakes. When unwrapping the rubbers, I also take extra care to make sure they remain undamaged. And there we have 10 erasers for review. Now, going over each of these in turn, we've got the Stabilo Student Grade Eraser and its exam grade equivalent. Visually, the student eraser looks pretty standard, if a little hard, but the exam grade eraser looks more premium and feels a little bit softer. Uh, similarly, we have a standard Faber-Castell eraser and its exam grade equivalent. This is also a German brand, and I like the look and feel of the standard eraser. It's got an interesting off-white color. Now, the exam grade eraser looks nice, but it's also the smallest rubber on today's list, which means it'll fit me just fine. Next we have Stadler, which is another German brand. The erasers they're offering are a little bit different to Stabilo and Faber Castell. They've got the Razoplast, which is a rather hard eraser, as well as a soft eraser. Now, being soft is a bad thing in other contexts, but when it comes to erasers, I think it's definitely a positive. Now, I don't like the feel of Razoplast. It's a bit too stiff and incompressible. And whereas the soft eraser is a lot nicer, and I definitely prefer it to the Razoplast. Next up we have the Pentel erasers, one light and one soft. The uh, light eraser is described as being dust free, well, while the soft eraser is described as having dust which sticks together. Pentel is a Japanese brand and while both the erasers look nice, I'm partial to soft erasers. And I really like the look and feel of the Pentel soft. It's got a nice colour, a unique sheen and has a nice spongy feel to it. Next up we have the Pop Basic Eraser, which is a store brand eraser. You know, nothing special about that, it looks pretty standard, it's pretty big as well. Being a store brand eraser, I would think not many people have heard of it before. And lastly we have a Pilot Foam Eraser. Pilot is the largest pen manufacturer in Japan, but they do other stationery as well. It looks fairly nice, but also fairly standard. Now, it's interesting that most of the erasers are from either Japan or Germany, but I guess it makes sense that two countries with a history of making big mistakes would want to be good at erasing them. Anyway, I thought this would be a good chance to see which countries' erasers come out on top. So before getting into the tier lists, let's start with the metrics. So the first metric I'll look at is cost. Initially I was planning to do comparisons on the basis of how much each individual eraser cost, but since some erasers are bigger than others, this didn't seem like a fair comparison. So I decided to measure the cost per gram instead. I used a household mass balance to measure the mass of each eraser individually. I also weighed multiple erasers of the same kind and took an average to minimize random error. The second test is the lifespan test. You don't want your erasers to wear out quickly, so lifespan is pretty important. To test eraser lifespan, I stroked each eraser 100 times on a piece of ruled paper and tried to observe how much of the eraser was abraded. It would have been ideal to measure the mass of each eraser before and after the test, but my mass balance wasn't precise enough to detect the difference. So I had to resort to a sort of qualitative judgement where I tried to judge how much of each eraser had been abraded by visually comparing the before and after pictures. Now, of course, visual judgement is an imprecise science, so I tried to use another metric to determine the degree of abrasion, namely the amount of eraser dust generated from the 100 eraser strokes. Um, as it turns out, there was a pretty good correlation Erasers that were abraded more tended to generate more dust. So I thought these two sub-metrics would be good proxies for the main metric of lifespan. Now, you can see that some erasers last longer than others. 
Even after being stroked 100 times, this one is barely worn out, still hard and ready for action, which is more than my girlfriend would say about me. Now onto the third metric, which is erasure of ruled lines. If you've ever been a student, the last thing you want is to erase any ruled lines or printed text on your exams. It's especially annoying when you're a science student using graph paper, because then you really need the grid lines to do your plots. Unfortunately, I didn't have graph paper, so I just used traditional ruled paper, as well as some words written in ink. I then checked each piece of paper to see which eraser caused the most damage to the root line and the ink after the 100 strokes from the earlier lifespan test. Here's an example of a before and after picture. Now you can see that underneath the word date, the root line is a bit faded in the after picture. These pictures were for the Statler Razoplast eraser, but I did this test also for all 10 erasers. Fourthly, I'll be looking at the dust quality metric. Personally, I prefer dust which sticks together and makes less of a mess, so I'll be ranking eraser dust with those characteristics more highly. If you look at these two dust samples from two erasers, you can see that the bottom sample has a much smoother texture, is less fibrous and has fewer identifiable discrete strands. By contrast, the upper sample is a lot more fibrous and less aesthetically pleasing. Uh, in this next slide, you can also see that the bottom sample sticks together and rolls into a nice smooth ball, whereas the upper sample is much less malleable. Eraser dust with characteristics closer to that of the bottom sample were ranked more highly. The fifth and most important metric was erasing power. This is by far the most important metric. You know, ultimately an eraser is meant to erase, and you want something that gets the job done. I used a 2B pencil and had a test where I tried to erase the pencil marks off completely and rated each eraser based on how much graphite residue was left over. This was a very satisfying test to do because when something dirty catches my eye, it makes me want to rub one out. I was initially going to do another test called a two-stroke test. However, I ended up replacing the two-stroke test with a repeat of the first test as I thought that would be more useful. I then took an average of the results from both tests. I also planned to do an ink erasure test, but couldn't notice any significant ink erasure with any of the erasers, so I won't be including that in this video. So now I'll be doing tier lists for each metric, but I'll be showing the results of each tier list ranking straight away, and only doing a live ranking for the final overall tier list. Let's start with our first metric, cost. Right off the bat, we immediately notice that the store brand eraser is the only S tier, which isn't too surprising since most store brand items tend to be cheaper. The second thing to note is the price gap. Um, though it's not evident from the tier list, the most expensive eraser, the Pilot, is actually more than six times the cost of the cheapest one, which is the Pro Basic. That's a huge gulf. The third thing is that the exam grade erasers were more expensive than they are non-exam grade equivalents. So the Stabilo exam grade is more expensive than the Stabilo student grade, and likewise with the Faber Castell. Which I guess is not too surprising since the exam grade erasers are marketed as being more premium. Lastly, the Japanese erasers tended to cost more than their German counterparts, with the exception of the Faber Castell exam grade eraser. And that is it for cost. What I also did was give each eraser in this tier list a cost rating out of 5 stars. I then took the average for all the German erasers, and the average for all the Japanese erasers, and compared the two. Overall, Germany beats Japan in this cost category with an average rating of 2.5 stars against Japan's 2.0 stars. I'll now move on to the second metric, which is lifespan. It seems like the soft Pentel eraser and the two exam grade erasers had the greatest lifespan, with all of these being an A tier. Meanwhile, most of the other erasers had basically the same lifespan. All of them were in B tier. The one exception is the pilot eraser, which had the smallest lifespan of the lot, earning it a spot in C tier. So pilot thus far has been performing poorly, since we also saw earlier that it had the highest cost. Again, I've used the star rating for this part, and overall, Germany beats Japan in the lifespan category with an average rating of 3.3 stars against 3.0 stars. 
You know, you often hear about Japanese people having the greatest life expectancy in the world, but sadly the same can't be said of the art erasers. Next we have the third metric, erasure of ruled lines. The Stabilo student eraser, the Statler Rasoplast eraser, and the Store brand eraser seem to cause more damage than the other erasers to the root lines, so were put into C tier. Meanwhile, the Stabilo exam grade eraser, the Faber Castell dust free eraser, and the Pentel soft eraser seem to cause the least damage to root lines, making them A tier. The others were put into B tier as they were somewhere in between. Overall, Japan beats Germany in this category with an average rating of 3.3 stars against 3.0 stars. Next we have the fourth metric, which is dust quality. Here, the two exam grade erasers, the Faber Castell dust free eraser, the Pentel soft eraser, and the Pilot Foam eraser all had dust which I really liked, earning them an S tier ranking. The dust had a smooth texture and was easily rolled together. Meanwhile, the Stabilo student grade eraser, the Statler Razoplast, and the Pentel light eraser had less aesthetically pleasing dust, earning them a C tier ranking. I should note that although some of the lower ranked erasers had a coarser texture, none of the erasers really abraded the paper itself. They only abraded the lines on the ruled paper, so that's good news if you don't want your paper to tear. Overall, for the dust quality category, Japan leaves Germany in the dust with an average 3.7 stars against 3.4 stars. Next up we have the fifth metric which is erasing power. Starting from the bottom we have the Pentel soft eraser and the store brand eraser which both performed equally badly. The poor erasing power of the store brand eraser was expected but I was really disappointed by Pentel soft. I had high hopes for it since it had a really nice texture, nice dust quality and high lifespan. The Statler Soft Eraser performed a little bit better and was borderline A tier, but still not quite there yet. Next up we had the Stabilo Student Grade Eraser, which was at the bottom of A tier, so slightly below average here. Um, then we have the Stabilo Exam Grade Eraser, the Rasoplast and the Pentel Light, all three of which performed equally well. Next up we have the S tier Erasers, so both the Faber-Castell erasers did really well, but surprisingly, the exam grade Faber-Castell eraser didn't have as much didn't have as much erasing power as the standard Faber-Castell. This is despite the Faber-Castell exam grade eraser being double the cost of the standard Faber-Castell eraser. Lastly, we have our erasing power winner. It's the Japanese Pilot eraser, which was the erasing power winner and the only eraser to score a perfect five stars on one of the eraser tests. It is indisputably better than all the other erasers on this list for this metric. This was unsurprising as we know Japanese pilots were blowing the opposition out of the water ever since World War II, which I guess also explains why their lifespans were so short. Anyway, this eraser had really little residue left over and it was nice to see that it performed so well. Overall though, its performance wasn't good enough to bring Japan the win in this metric and Germany still beats it uh, in terms of erasing power with a rating of 3.6 stars against 3.5 stars, but it was close. So now we move on to the overall tier list. And as I mentioned, the overall tier list is going to be based on all the previous metrics, but not each metric has equal weight. Personally, I would place a greater emphasis on erasing power and cost, along with a lower emphasis on lifespan and minimal emphasis on dust quality and erasure of root lines. I should say that overall, no eraser is going to make it into S tier, C tier, or D tier. This is because there were no erasers that which performed well in every single dimension, or badly in every single dimension. So when you did the averaging of all the metrics, um, they all sort of fell in the middle. And the thing is that even the worst eraser could still erase most of the graphite on the paper. Like, I've had other erasers which were just simply unusable, so I'd reserve the C and D ratings for such erasers, you know, of which there were none in this ranking. So I'm going to break down the A and B tiers into sub-tiers just to show greater differentiation. So starting at the bottom, we have the Pentel Soft Eraser in B tier. 
This was really disappointing as I thought the eraser looked pretty, but sadly it was quite expensive and had the joint worst erasing power. The only thing it had going for it was a nice dust, dust quality and a longer lifespan, but this wasn't good enough to save it from the last spot. In second last we have the Statler Soft Dust Free Eraser. Its erasing power was one of the worst, and it was quite expensive. Its dust quality was alright, not great, but apart from this it didn't really have any redeeming qualities, so it is our first B plus tier. In third last we have the Pentel Light Eraser. Its erasing power was alright, it was basically middle of the pack. Um, while its dust quality and cost weren't great though, so it's the third last and placed in the B plus tier. In seventh place we have our final B plus tier, which is the Statler Razoplast. Its erasing power was also middle of the pack, and it was cheaper than most of the erasers. However, it scored poorly in terms of ruled line erasure as well as dust quality. Moving on to the A- tier, in joint 5th place we have the Stabilo Student Grade Eraser and the Store Brand Eraser. Now, the Stabilo was one of the cheapest erasers, but didn't make the top of the list because of its slightly below average erasing power, poor dust quality and poor line erasure score. The Store Brand Eraser had the worst erasing power and didn't score well in most of the other metrics. However, it was the cheapest eraser by a significant margin, and this helped it get to 5th place. In 4th place we have the Stabilo Exam Grade Eraser, which was also an A-. Now, this eraser had excellent lifespan, excellent dust quality, and excellent erasure of lines. Unfortunately, when it came to the more important metrics like cost and erasing power, it was only average. In third place we have the Faber-Castell Exam Grade Eraser, which is in A tier. It also had excellent lifespan and dust quality. It also had great erasing power. However, it was the second most expensive eraser, and this brought its score down a little. In second place we have our runner-up, which is the Japanese Pilot, scoring an A-. minor A+. While it had the best erasing power, it was also the most expensive eraser, and that kept it from grabbing the top spot. And finally we have the overall best eraser, it's the Faber-Castell Dust Free Eraser. This is the best all-round eraser, as it's reasonably cheap, has great erasing power, great dust agglomeration, and doesn't erase root lines as much. In my opinion, it absolutely deserves the top spot. So we come to the question of who wins the overall ranking, Japan or Germany. Unsurprisingly, it's Germany, since they scored 3.2 stars on average compared to 3.0 stars from Japan on average overall. And this makes sense when you think about what we saw in the two most important metrics of cost and erasing power. The German erasers performed roughly as well as the Japanese ones when it came to erasing power, but the Japanese erasers were more expensive on average than German ones, so Germany wins out. Obviously this was a fairly limited sample of erasers. I only looked at three Japanese erasers and six German ones. And also some of the tests were quite subjective, as were the weighings chosen, so take all of these results with a grain of salt. Um, that's all for now, thanks for watching.